Hey guys, welcome to Voice Bootcamp. My name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com. Thank you for uh, taking the time to attend this webinar. Uh, this webinar is about uh, Cisco UCC call flow, uh, part of our self-study kit from UCC 11.5 deployment kit that we are about to release pretty soon. Uh, this uh, seminar will run about 40 minutes, so be patient. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at uh, fcon at voicebootcamp.com or you can send it to support at voicebootcamp.com. Now, based on the participant, we can see there's a lot of people that sign up today, so. I will try to answer your questions as much as I can, but if, if in case if I cannot uh, answer your questions, I will uh, be glad to reply to your email and uh, try to help you out as much as I can um, off the, outside the seminar sessions. Times are limited, so let's get started. Now, call flow is one of the most important topic within UCC. In order for you to understand the UCC components and how each component works together and overall what is happening within your call center, it is extremely important for you to understand the call flow itself. Once you can have a clear picture of the call flow from end to end, you will have a lot of uh, concept cleared and you will also see that many um, topic that you are component that you're configuring as to why you're configuring that per, uh, component so having a good knowledge about the call flow is definitely an important now call flow is basically a, a flow chart which is usually developed by uh, based on business logic from a com uh, you know the business unit of the company so it's created by a call script which is ICM routing script a call script which are created using a, a compiler called script editor that we will show you later in the course but it really follows a flowchart of a business logic that determine how the call is to be processed and usually is developed by the business unit of the company now you and I the technical guy we don't make that flowchart although we can uh, technically do it but we don't decide we don't get to decide that factor now the purpose of any call flow of course is to allow the customer to, or the caller rather to connect to appropriate resources and that resource could be sales agent if it's a sales call support agent if it's a support call and so and so creating a, a call script from a very simple business logic flowchart is not that complicated task but the more complex more complicated your flowchart is the more complicated the script is going to be so the call flow should be designed to ensure that the customer calls are answered the most effectively and timely fashion because hey nobody really wants to wait in a queue for 15 minutes or more you need to let the customer know how long they will wait you need to try to minimize as much as possible so this is one of the most important uh, like i said topic within the ucc that one must understand now the call flow itself goes through a development life cycle um, it, it starts from a it's a process you start at somewhere and you finish at some point so the first place where you start from a business unit team is to determine the business requirement where it is developed by the, either the manager or the customer care department customer service department um, you know whichever team is responsible for figuring out how to um, deal with the customer calls what, what should happen when the customer calls in who should be answered by how long what options are given to customers all those menu driven options that you pretty much hear these days in a call center has to be first determined by the business unit they will come up with that a uh, flow chart uh, in, a, in either in Visio or some other third-party um, flow chart maker now once the flow chart is conf configured I uh, rather created and validated then the engineers like you and I will come in and convert that once we understand the flowchart uh, convert that to a technical requirement um, once we have the technical requirement understanding process done then we will actually create the script and then configure the system to support that script because of course remember when we're creating the script there are many components that needs to be configured in the system to support that script 
So we must do that in parallel. Once the script is created, we will do the rigorous testing to ensure that it matches the business requirement or the uh, flowchart. And then once that is validated, signed off, we will go live and uh, uh, production. So these are the development lifecycle for any uh, any software development, or other, uh, but this is more focused on the call script. This is an example of a real world flowchart. This was actually uh, from a production network that uh, currently one of my friends is working on. I have removed all sensitive information to ensure that it does not uh, uh, provide any company details. So I basically um, modified it. And what it is is basically shows you um, the start of the call process. So customer calls in, it will start the process right here. It will do a validation check, like caller ID check. If the call came from a certain region, go here. If it comes from any of these two regions, like Ontario or Quebec, or rest of the Canada, it will go to CA, and then from there, we'll decide if the call is for Toronto Voice Bootcamp or not. If it is for Toronto Voice Bootcamp, then the call will go this direction. If not, the call will go to this direction. And then as you notice, it will play a prompt right here, and then many more um, decision make, may, uh, making process that we go through before we even hear the message, for further messages. So each node that you see right here has a specific purpose and a logic behind that. And that decision, of course, or what is going to be uh, asking the user, what is going to, what action is going to take, are done uh, by the business unit team. But our job is to program it. <clears throat> now, this is more, like I said, continue of, continuation of the flowchart. As you see, it start to grow bigger. The more complex a flowchart becomes, the more complex a scripting is going to be. But then again, once you have a problem or if, if you have any issues, the logic is not working or the calculation is not working, then it's easier to pinpoint where that problem might be by looking at the flowchart. Now, once we understand the technical guys understand the flowchart, then our job is to translate to technical requirement. So this is a script that we develop based on the flowchart, and we will program it, customize it, put whatever the technical requirements, uh, parameters that is needed, and then we will validate and test the scripts. Now, we're gonna go. I'm gonna walk you through a few call flow examples, which can be quite. Uh, Sometimes some for some people might be difficult to understand But my recommendation is that keep watching this video over and over until you get to the point where you actually understand 50 to 80 percent of it Now this is an example where a call is coming from a service provider such as PSTN or your VIP connection to a voice gateway So this is a Cisco 2900 or 2800 series router acting as voice gateway as well as VXML gateway now the VXML gateway, basically the router itself is a VXML browser. Now, because the call, we're, what we're gonna do, we're gonna send the call to CVP. What the VXML gateway, what the router does in this scenario, uh, it will send an HTTP request right here. HTTP request to the CVP server. Now, CVP server, you notice this server right here, has three, uh, three or four different services running. One of the service, is called VXML. Second, we have ICM service. Three, we have um, call server, which is sub subsystem. The call server is SIP service. Well, actually, ICM service also falls into call servers. So these are, uh, and then you might have also IVR server, which is which is very similar to VXML. So these server services that are all either running in the same CVP server or a different CVP server, individualized. So anyway, right now we're gonna to stick to a uh, single box solution. So the call will come in from HTTP request from the gateway into CVP server and it's gonna to go to, this, this request will go to the VXML process in step number two. Now, step number three, the application which is running in the VXML server 
will send a message to the call server. In this case, the from VXML server, the call will come to call server. In the call server, it will send a request for a label from the ICM. So from the VXML, it will send a call to ICM. ICM will send the calls to PG in step number three. So server send a message to the CVP call server requesting the CVP will uh, basically dictating the CVP should request uh, a label a response from the ICM server so step 4 uh, step 4 CVP server will send ICM new call request via the voice response unit peripheral interface manager which is right here running on the PG and this new request that is coming on in step number four invokes a new incoming route response that in turn invoke a routing script in the ICM so by initiating this connection on step number four what you're doing oh, look like a happy face uh, well uh, by initiating a connection on step number four what you're really technically doing telling the ICM that hey I need a response to so execute a script. ICM is going to look at the phone number and is going to try to execute whatever the script that phone number is associated with. Remember the phone number that the user usually dial. So that is step number four. A new route request invokes a new incoming route response that in turn invokes a routing script to be executed in the ICM server. Now, step five. ICM will go through the script and at some point it is decided that it is going to return a response and that response will return a, 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 sorry it will return a label as a response and because the call came from the PG that response will go to PG itself step number five so ICM returns a routing label to the CVP call server so now steps the CVP right here is the call server that receives that request uh, label once CVP server returns a message in step 6 CVP server will return a message to the VXML server with that routing label so within that CVP so from the call server that message the label will now go to the VXML service now step number seven, uh, VXML will return to the VXML gateway. So that means VXML server will return the label to the gateway, which is in this case is the ingress router, as well as VXML gateway itself. Now at, at step seven, what is happening is it is possible that depending on how the script instruct the CVP what to do, it is possible that VXML could include uh, reference to the ASR IP address or media server IP address for playing prompt or collection of digit or even can transfer the instruction transfer instruction based on the label itself step 8 VXML gateway or the voice gateway can optionally transfer the call to any destination that it can deliver now in this example the call is being delivered to a call manager as you can see step 8 goes to this direction step 9 call manager and the gateway establish a connection and step 10 is call manager will set up a call between the agent phone and that extension of the agent phone let's say let's say the extension is 2001 that extension is what came in step number 5 as a label okay and that is going like this okay so Step nine, call manager tells the voice gateway that, hey, to reach extension 2001, here is the IP address, 1.1.1. .1 that could be the IP address of the phone. And at the same time, call manager send a message, ring the phone, because call manager has to set up the call. So step 10 is going to ring the phone. So this is pretty much an example of a, a very simple call flow. Now you got to understand in this scenario is that this particular call flow returns only a routing label from a result of execution of routing script in ICM due to a new call dialog 
which was requested in step number four uh, between the ICM and CVP. Now running an external script or providing a queue is not supported at this kind of variable. So this means that there is no IVR functionality at this moment. It is simply when the agent is available. Okay, so because agent the ICM did found the extension of the agent, agent was available, ICM did its job and the call went reverse and in order to complete the call. So that's one example. Next, I will show you more comprehensive example. Number two, I'm going to give you more comprehensive uh, call flow that includes a, either a SIP proxy server or you can put as another like uh, call manager server in between that. So again, just making sure it's recording. Yeah, the call is coming in from uh, your PSTN or VoIP connection into the gateway in step number one. Now the ingress gateway, step two, will send a SIP invite message. So this is where the invite message comes in. Now, when a gateway send a SIP invite message to proxy server, depending on whether it's a delay proxy or early proxy, uh, so a delay offer or early offer, um, either a single SIP invite message will be sent or invite plus SDP message will be sent. Now, SIP proxy, proxy server will forward this SIP invite message to the CVP server, and from the previous scenario uh, slide, you probably you, know, you heard about that CVP is running multiple service. So this will go to the SIP service on the CVP server because CVP server is also a SIP server itself. Now step four, SIP service from the CVP will send a new call request to the IC unified ICM or UCCE server via the ICM service and the PG. So right here inside this CVP, that's a choice of wrong color. Inside this CVP right here, this is the ICM service. And this is a SIP service. So it's gonna send it to the ICM service. ICM service is gonna send a request to the PG server. Now, once it goes to the PG, step number five, CVP SIPs ICM service send a request to PG. PG will then forward that request or uh, uh, initiate a route request via the routing script in the ICM in the step number five. So CVP will send a request, a new call request to ICM. ICM is gonna look at the number the user dialed, match a ICM routing script, and then execute the script. Now, as the ICM executed the script, it realized that the caller must be transferred to a IVR platform because there is no agent available. Or maybe you want to further, you know, get some information from the caller, like for example, their PIN number, their account number, something like that. So steps, step number six, what the ICM is going to do is going to transfer the call, uh, transfer the call back to VRU. In this case, the VRU is the PG server, and pass something called connect to VRU request to the PG. So ICM is telling the PG that hey, can you connect this call to the VRU PG, which will be forwarded to the ICM service in step number, oops, seven. It will come back right here as you can see this is ICM service within the CVP server. So PG will pass the information provided in step number six to the ICM service that is running on the CVP call server. Now CVP on step number eight a connect to VRU's request goes from CVP service back to the proxy server requir requiring the proxy server to determine which gateway to use. So now the ICM service that where it receives a call is going to pass that call to this. This is a SIP service. SIP service is going to send a request on 8, step 8, to the proxy saying, hey, can you find the best VXML gateway 
to route the call. Now, obviously, SIP will have his own um, routing, uh, sorry, routing table, which will ultimately uh, decide what is what is going to do. Step nine: invitation to is sent from the SIP proxy server right here to the VXML gateway which will then connect an audio path back to the ingress gateway so you have a uh, audio files will come from the media server all the audio prompt like welcome to voice bootcamp or please enter your account number those files are stored right here so there will be an uh, rtp path between that it will connect the information um, then step 10 vxml uh, sorry vru label which calls the vxml gateway to fire off an application dalpier which will start the vru or the application leg of, of the call so now the gateway connects the cvp call server via http and requests instruction for further treatment a new http call request will come on step number 10 back to the VXM, uh, CVP server, but this time this service right here goes to the VXML service or IVR services. Step 11, ICM uh, service send the route request instruction to the ICM via the PG. Call goes back to ICM for further treatment. Now at this stage when the call came back, when the call comes back to step 12, it goes back to the same script that was actually invoked on step number 5. Now, you remember how the call was returned back on step 6, 7, and 8? Well, that was basically the ICM script telling CVP what to do with the call. But that script in ICM was also continuously running. So when that number uh, step 10, 11, and 12, the traffic came back to ICM, it actually came back to the same script. And then now this ICM script is going to take further action. So that means it could ask the caller for more details. It can uh, ask the CVP to collect digit or whatever. Whatever the instruction the script is going to do. So this is basically, uh, you know, going goes back and forth between ICM and CVP and VXML gateway until an agent becomes available. Now, once agent becomes available, so let's assume an agent did become available at this stage. Step 13 is to return the extension of that agent back to the PG. So what ICM will do is dequeue the call, ask to disconnect from the VXML gateway. ICM will pass connect to agent request to CVP server ICM service via the PG. So again, this step number uh, 14 PG will then pass the information provided in step 13 to the ICM service. So this is right here is again back to ICM service. Okay, that's step 14. Now step 15, CVP SIP service will pass the, this VRU disconnect request to the proxy. Now the SIP service right here send a disconnect request to the SIP proxy. That is the step number 15. Now step 16, SIP proxy server will pass a disconnect message to the VXML gateway and connect to agent request will be sent to the SIP proxy, uh, to the call manager in step 16. So the call manager receives the extension. Obviously, call manager knows that extension belongs to his agent. That's where the phone is registered. Once it rings the phone, the call manager is going to send a disconnect message, a message to the unified PG, which connects the call manager to the ICM. And the purpose of the step number 17 is a call manager needs to inform the ICA PG saying that the call was successfully delivered to the agent so that ICM knows and that the call has been successful. PG will then notify the ICM then the call has been delivered to the UCCE agent. So as you can see, it, this is the call um, process when you have IVR 
involved where the call is being queued or further call treatments taking place and so and so. The next few slides will walk you through more advanced um, call flow but before you go to that what I wanted to cover is that a call flow and as it happened which component or which configuration within the system that gets involved. So this is the overall call flow between as the call coming in till to the agent. Now let's take a look at switch leg. A call is coming in from the ingress gateway. A customer has dialed this toll free number. Portion of that number will be delivered to the SIP to the call server. Now this is a SIP service. That call server will connect to ICM. ICM will then send a new route request to the sorry ICM service will send a new route request to the UCCE server with this direct, uh, DN number. UCCE server will match this DN to a dial number and then therefore the dial number will be mapped to a script. So this is your script. As the script execute at some point within the script what we will hit this point where it says send to VRU meaning send the calls to CVP or IPI VR. UCCE will send the label of the CVP server how to reach the CVP a temporary connection back to CVP a PG and then PG will send it to CVP of course connect to the CVP now in the CVP server there's a static route that says any call with 4999 send it to this IP address and that IP address happens to be this gateway right here the VXML gateway an invite message from the CVP comes in as the call coming to the C sorry the VXML gateway in step this is step right here as a call comes into the VXML gateway that call will match a local dial pair matching incoming call number 49990 purpose of that statement or purpose of matching this incoming call to that particular dial pair so that this application can be executed service boot strap once that that is one of the main for a first script within the uh, vxml gateway that will get executed now the purpose of that script of course is to initiate vxml gateway once it's execute this service bootstrap is going to open another application to initiate a new call oops let me erase the numbers all right so it's going to open this application called new call ultimately an http request goes back to cvp now this stage right here this is your vxml service not the ivr not the icm vxml service now from there a, a, call, a connection between ucce and cvp will go back and forth for ivr treatment you know press one to do this press two to do that so and so so at some point agent will become available and when does when that agent does become available so the extension of the agent is 2001 UCC server will send the extension of the agent as a label back to CVP to transfer the call when it does become available CVP sends an invite request to the call manager with the label 2001 call manager knows that 2001 is one of the phone that is registered to itself and the call will can will get connected so that is uh, what's taking place and as each step the call comes in and I'll show you which component or which configuration it is affecting The next I'm going to show you is more advanced call flow example from one of our uh, one of the company in In Toronto uh, so that you can see how complex it can be So this is an example of a real-world uh, call flow from one of our client uh, also provided to me a friend of mine now I'm going to explain you to the step by step as to what's happening to this particular call flow so that you can get a better understanding. Now this is a scenario where a call comes in but there's no agent available which is marked by yellow um, color as you can see the um, circle of dot numbers and the pink color that you see is when the agent does become available and call goes from the queue to the agent. So let me make sure my recording is done yeah 
All right, so this is the topology on the right, uh, uh, right hand side. And on the left hand side, I'm going to explain each step of what's, going, what's, what's really happening. So first, the customer dials the help desk number. So imagine that little cell phone right there, that is your customer who's calling in. The call goes to PSTN. PSTN will deliver the call to your gateway. And step number two, this is my gateway right here. On the, the, that particular gateway, uh, well, an application, IVR application will be triggered. Now imagine if, I mean, we're gonna assume that the call from the PSTN comes through all sorts of Hoopla gateways, call manager, whatnot, but the call will ultimately come into this IVR application that is residing on this little box that you see right here. So we will call that IVR. That's where the application will be triggered. Now IVR will notify the VRU PG you, on step number four, that little circle that you see, a notification goes all the way to the VRU PG that's sitting right here, um, indicating that there's a new call coming in. Step five, basically in that message, um, basically indicate that the caller has requested to transfer to an agent. So. Step five is not really an action, it's basically an information that is being carried after uh, IVR notifies the VRU page, uh, PG that a new call is coming in. So step five contains that information that caller wants to transfer the call to an agent. Step six, which is right here, a VRU PG will request a route from the ICM which will trigger an, a script because obviously in the UCCE, there's a right number seven right here, what I'm circling. That's where the VRU is, sorry, the ICM script is, or UCC script. The script will look something like this. Start the script, translate to VRU. As soon as you start the script, your next step is called translate to VRU. Now translate to VRU meaning you're telling the system that this call requires to transfer to an age, um, transfer to, let's say, uh, to an agent, uh, so to, VR, uh, to CVP or IP IVR server. We're going to select agent based on longest available agent. That is a little bit of a misspelling. Based on skills group sales US, sales India. Queue the call to skills group for sales US, sales India in case agent is not available. And when an agent is not available, we're going to send the call to VRU, meaning that send it to CVP. We're going to, once a CVP has been connected, we're going to run external script, agent not available, which will say, sorry, all of our agents are busy. Please stay on the line. Somebody will answer your call momentarily. And then we're going to run a wait music. You know, you will play uh, music while the customer wait. And then we're going to go to step uh, Q to skills group to loop until an agent does become available. So that's what's happening in step number seven. Now, Step number eight, as soon as step two within the script is actually hit right here, where it says translate to VRU, as soon as it hits that, the UCCE router will send a temporary label of how to reach the VRU PG. So as soon as it, it, it hits that, it's gonna re, uh, dial the number that allows you to reach the CVP PG. A voice gateway so using a translation uh, uh, tr a trunk line CVP PG is advised that a call is coming from a VRU uh, from an IVR through a specific trunk line which is step number nine and uh, this is happening right here so while he returns and step eight while he returns the label back to the IVR UCC router also tells the CVP PG that hey you're expecting a new call from that particular uh, trunk line. Temporary label will be sent back to IVR application which is step number uh, right here uh, 10. Right here a call came back to the IVR. IVR send that call back to the PSTN through step 11 because obviously the call has to go out to the PSTN to be able to dial this number 416-514-9999. Now this number will be sent back to PSTN and at the same time when 
IVR hand the call over back to service provider like Bell or Telus. Step 2, 12. IVR has to notify through the step number 12 to the VRUPG right here, IVR VRUPG saying that I have completed the call using GD, GED protocol 125. So he hand over the call to PSTN, PS, I, IVR app server right here in the middle, middle, notifying the VRU that I have completed the call because remember that's the PG that actually initiated the uh, label or request. Call hits is step 13. Call hits the PSDN and then ultimately that number leads to this voice gateway. Now, as the call coming into voice gateway, Voice Gateway request a route for this particular phone number. Step 14, and you'll notice the 14 is right here to the gatekeeper. Is looking for what to what do I do with this number? Uh, gatekeeper or the voice or cube will ultimately give you the destination for this particular number, and so therefore the destination at um, how to reach that number will be sent back to the voice gateway. Voice gate will signal the CBP voice browser on step number 16. So step number 16, the, there will be a SIP, some sort of dial pair, which will send the call to SIP uh, CBP and the voice browser within the CBP server. Step 17, CBP is going to trigger an application that is running on the CBP application server, the VXML. So that's the script that take care take take over call, take over the call at that moment. Now, the application server, which is right here has a route request instruction is sent to step number 18 to the CBP PG ultimately asking the ICM that hey I, what do I do with this call at the same time the an injunction is done where the control and the data will be passed to CBP so therefore what's happening is now the voice gateway is no longer the requesting of the uh, of the call it is CVP now becomes a requesting of the call so that's where it says the control and the data will be passed to the CVP uh, PG so the CVP PG becomes a new routing client at this moment the step 2 is completed the script on the initially that is started will continue and as it continues it will go through the whole process where step 5 uh, sorry, steps four, skills group. It found out there's no agent available in that particular group. Step 21, identified that there's no agent available. Step 22, instructions sent back to, from the ICM back to the CVP, saying that, hey, uh, agent is not available, so play the music call agent not available. So instruction at this moment came back to CV, uh, PG. PG send that information to the CVP app server saying you need to play uh, agent not available music which is kind of an audio file step 24 play uh, agent not available music will be forwarded to the browser as you can see this is number 24 right here just try to follow the number step 25 same music file will be forwarded to voice browser which is right back to the gateway and ultimately the gateway plays the music to the caller because that's where the call came in from PSTN remember that so this is happening when agent is not available and you caller is hearing the music file now assume that 
agent does become available. So what we're going to do, agent become available. The extension of the agent is 2001. So agent right here has logged in to call manager and a finance server, whatever was not. Extension 2000 is available. What the call manager is going to do, the call manager is going to notify the call manager, CUCMPG, that will advise ICM that agent is available through the JTAPI uh, protocol. Agent is selected in ICM because obviously agent is logged in through the FINAS. So agent will be selected. A reservation request is made to the um, Unified PG or Call Manager PG for extension 2001. So what's happening on step 30 is that ECC reserved the agent extension. Tell the tell the call manager that the call, that we have reserved it through the JTAP and GED 125, and then UCC will request interruption, saying to the CVP saying, "Okay, uh, call is being transferred. Please uh, interrupt this particular call." So an in an execution interruption and it will be executed. From the UCC to the CVP, UCC will then send the label of 2001 to the CVP PG. So that is uh, step number 31, somewhere right here. Look now, try to follow the pink color. Step 32, UCC request at the same time. So 32 will be right here. The PG will send the information to the app server. App server will then send that information to 33 to the voice browser. Voice browser notifies a voice gateway, which is 34, that please stop the music. We need to transfer this call. Since it stops the music, voice gateway will now request a route for the extension 2001. So voice gateway must have a path or knows how to do what how to route the call to extension 2001. Now Voice Gateway will then request the Gatekeeper or the Cube saying, what do I do with 2001? Gatekeeper or Cube on step 36 returns the IP address of the device that can route the call to extension 2001. And in this case, technically the call manager. Now, Voice Gateway requests the call manager to request extension 2001. Request, sorry. Uh, voice Gateway requests the call manager to ring the extension 2001. This is when the agent phone is ringing. Call manager rings the extension. Agent answers the call. And this is a good time when the screen pop, pop, pop up can occur where all the data that you want to pass to the agent will take place at this step number 40. So as you can see, if you really follow the step by step, uh, re uh, repeat this call flow 100 times if you have to, uh, this particular call flow will become like uh, very easy to understand and once you understand that you will get a good vibe uh, in terms of how these different components are actually talking to each other all right so that's pretty much it for this call flow <laughs> make sure you call flow as i said earlier the call flow is one of the most important aspect of ucc solution master the call flow over and over until you're 100 percent sure you understand and when you do do it over and over again until you get bored of it or you can do it in your sleep you can explain it in your sleep you can uh, talk about it you can you can like you know exactly which step as was was taking place so that's pretty much it for our call flow in this chapter and i will see you in the next